Hello everyone and welcome. Last week we had a video called Terrain Generation where we made some basic terrain using blocks and you guys seem to really like the idea so I went ahead and put together this project which takes that idea and takes it a few steps further uh, with some new ideas. So what I've gone ahead and done is last week we made something that looked like this and this week I'm going to go ahead and show you this. Now this is the same idea where we have uh, kind of like this grid of positions and we're putting blocks at those different height levels except now instead of blocks at placed at certain heights we kind of have nodes and then we have wedges that connect those nodes together into triangles so now we have triangle terrain as opposed to sort of blocky terrain uh, you also notice that the color of each wedge kind of has a different color depending on the height so we have height position as well as height color uh, we also have trees that spawn at certain heights uh, they don't spawn too high so they don't spawn on hills and they don't spawn too low to create sort of these uh, valleys so we kind of get this hill and valley shape uh, the hills have been extruded so at certain heights uh, the height is increased by a lot to kind of give these uh, mountains and lastly and probably most importantly we have chunks so as I move my camera around you'll notice that some chunks in the background will fade away and some chunks over here will start to spawn in and this is completely infinite it can destroy and create uh, endlessly as you move along and it will always remain the same amount of chunks of course I can exit from my camera and walk around and show you what it actually looks like and here we start to walk down this hill and into these trees and down into this uh, valley area and I did spend mm, some good hours on it trying to um, play with the settings that I've made for it and I've kind of come up with this and I think it looks pretty alright now I do want to show you how this whole terrain generation thing works so I'm going to be making a full tutorial on it however I cannot do it all in one video I have to split it up into parts because there is a lot to it so what I'll be doing in this video is just giving you kind of a general overview as well as a project download so that you can download it and look at it yourself and play around with it and do whatever you want with it really and just kind of give you a general overview of how it works and then over the next few few videos uh, after the week that this goes up I will be basically breaking this up into different parts and different concepts and teaching every single one of those concepts uh, individually and then adding them together to create this because there is a, a bit of uh, stuff that goes into something like this so I just kind of want to break it up into parts so it's a little bit simpler and it's not as uh, overwhelming but I'm sure you guys will do fine either way all right so let's get right into it so here we have a local script called terrain inside of starter player scripts and it's sort of the main function of this whole ordeal and I have it as a local script because I want every client to handle their own terrain rather than the server trying to figure out where to load chunks depending on where the players are and then loading them for them and then having that have to replicate anyway so every client just handles their own terrain and this works uh, because math.noise assuming that all the clients use the same seed math.noise is going to generate the same terrain no matter what uh, given the same position so I actually have the only server script I use is this server script called random seed and this basically just changes a value in workspace called seed to a value on the server and all the clients will then look at that seed and then use that seed for their terrain and right now I just have it to math that random so every time I run it it's gonna be a random seed uh, but of course you can make it constant if you wanted but uh, onto the important parts we have some constants namely these three which are the main settings of the whole thing um, chunks loaded per tick basically this says how many chunks can be loaded or destroyed um, before waiting again so right here five that means it's gonna f destroy five or create five 
chunks before uh, doing calling another weight and the weights basically just there to uh, make sure you don't load too many chunks at one time and uh, freeze or lag um, ticks update ticks per update cycle that basically just says um, how long to wait before uh, checking for an update again and then render distance is just the amount of chunks in distance um, to load from the camera that's pretty self-explanatory and then we have some uh, dynamic variables uh, want some for counting some for positions and then one to hold the chunk objects uh, I have a function to figure out what the current chunk position is for the player given their camera position uh, I have a function to determine how far that chunk is from where it last loaded. If it's too far away, what it will actually do is it will ignore this chunks loaded per tick and just try to load every single chunk as fast as it can, which will temporarily freeze uh, your game. But will so it's like if you teleport, it's like let's say your client teleports uh, a very far distance away out of the distance that you just rendered. It's going to try to catch up as fast as possible if the if the cam chunk is out of range. And I'll get into more detail on how that works later. Uh, and then I basically destroy and render. And these are basically do the opposite of each other. Uh, render will create new chunks and destroy will destroy those chunks. And then a general update terrain function. And then a repeat loop which um, calls update terrain um, depending on whether fast load is enabled or the update count is equal to zero. <clears throat> so that's the main function. Uh, here we have the chunk object which is created by um, for some reason I can't open these for some reason. Anyway I'll go ahead and go into the chunk function or I'm sorry the chunk object now. So the chunk object has a bunch of constants as well, and these basically determine um, how the terrain is actually generated. So I have some different constants, and most of them are pretty self-explanatory, like terrain smoothness. Uh, the more, the higher this number is, the more spread out terrain will be. Height scale obviously affects how high and low uh, the, height, the heights will vary from the peaks of the mountains to the dips of the valleys. Width scale, um, xz, this determines how big each chunk is. Um, min tree spawn height, tree density, tree offset, um, max tree spawn height, mountain height, and chunk scale, which is just a calculation based on width scale and the number of uh, pieces in each or the amount of nodes in each chunk. Uh, then there's a function called draw 3D triangle and this is just a module that I pulled from Eagle Moose's um, GitHub tutorials and this basically can just take any vectors A, B, and C and create a wedge that connects those three points together. So that's a really useful function for the triangle terrain and I'll be getting into that later as well. I uh, have a function that creates the grid that we made from the first video. That's the 2D array. And I give it, uh, every 2D array is going to be different for each chunk. So I have to pass in a chunk position X and a chunk position Z. And it will figure out uh, what is the grid for that chunk. And that's a, a key part of making each chunk. Uh, a couple of functions to paint. So to this is just really simple. Just set the material to grass and set the color to, depending on what it's height, to some shade of green. Uh, similar story for the stone, a little more complicated, but again, just setting color and setting material. Um, paint tree leaves, same deal. Uh, create triangle terrain. This one takes in a chunk object. These are all private functions, by the way. These are not functions that are necessarily part of a chunk. There's only two, there's only really one function that's part of a chunk, and that's chunk destroy, but uh, create triangle terrain will take in a chunk, take in, iterate over its uh, position grid, and then say, okay, here's all the position nodes, and then here's how we have to use the draw 3D triangle uh, function, which it uses right here and here 
to create two wedges to connect all those uh, position nodes. And then another function, spawn trees, that obviously will take every chunk and figure out, okay, where should I put trees and then spawn them. And then lastly, we actually have the chunk object itself. I know half of this module is like not chunk and then this is the actual chunk object, but um, here's this constructor function. It just makes a chunk table. It stores its X position and Z position because that's pretty important for the chunk to know where it is. Uh, instances to hold so it can destroy them later. And again, its position grid. Um, then it, when it, whenever a new chunk is called, it will create its triangle terrain and spawn its trees right away, right away as well. And lastly, we have a function called chunk destroy, which again is called in the main function destroy uh, right here destroy distant chunks. I can't open it right now for some reason, um, but that it does chunk destroy does get called in here to destroy chunks, which is important because you can't just leave an endless amount of chunks behind. You wouldn't you you just run out of memory, right? So so that's kind of the overview of how it works. Not too detailed, I know, but um, over the next few videos, I will be explaining how a little bit more in detail. So. Uh, just for now, just be sure to check out the model in the description. It will have the terrain script, local script that will go in starter player scripts. It'll have the random seed script, which is just one line by the way. Uh, it'll have my starter tree model. You can use whatever tree you want as long as it has a primary part. And it also has some parts called leaves in it if you want to have that as well. Um, it looks like this by the way and the draw 3d triangle function module and the chunk object module and the uh, seed number value in the workspace so those one two three four five six things will be in the will be in the model in the description so be sure to get that and try and play around with it if you want so hope you thought this was interesting um, I can't wait to make all the videos for this and I'll see you guys soon.